kill death ratio. When it comes to multiplayer shooters, these three words can fill you with pride or make you shrivel up in shame. It can earn you virtual pats on the back from teammates or middle school insults that make you never want to go online again. Adrenaline is a fast-paced board game that captures the spirit of arena-based shooters like Quake, Unreal Tournament, or Halo. Only you get to hear the trash talking from your friends at the table instead of over your headset. Here's how the game plays. Each turn you get two actions. You can move, you can acquire cool gear, like maybe targeting scopes or, ooh, a teleporter, very exciting. You could go and acquire some ammo cubes that reload or help you acquire new weapons. You can also go to a spawn spot and acquire said new weapon. These weapon cards tell you how the weapon works. For example, you could have a rail gun that can shoot through walls at multiple targets. Um, you could get a vortex cannon that sucks up nearby enemies into one spot so you can damage them all at once. Uh, you can also, of course, go old school and just walk up to somebody and shoot them with your shotgun. Once you damage someone, you can take your color damage token, place it on their board. Um, damage somebody enough and once the, the person dies, we score the killed person's board by looking at a couple categories. Um, for instance, we can see who drew first blood, who did the most damage, that'd be me, um, and who did the killing blow. Each of these different achievements scores a different number of points, so this game is just as much about uh, when you shoot as well as just shooting anything in sight, which you can still do. Score the most number of points and you get to be the one who does the trash talking. One final caveat, if you do buy this game, unfortunately your miniatures may not look quite this badass. Special thanks to Ben Waxman from Miniatures Mutated who painted these for us. Now let's see what the Going Analog reviewers think. All right, we just finished Adrenaline, which is the sort of first person arena shooter style game, uh, board game, and um, I won. Right. Nearly. You yeah. guys remember that part, right? So I uh, want to introduce you guys. So uh, Joe, we're co-workers. You're one of my big board game friends. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, tell us really quickly, like, you know, your shooter background. Like, why are you reviewing this game? Um, been playing shooter since, I guess, the Quake Arena and Unreal Tournament. And it was a big part of, um, you know, my gaming experience growing up. So um, the idea of a kind of a, that genre into a, a board game kind of really appealed to me. So Cool. Yeah. And then Nick, uh, you've been on the show before, and then the, the last debut episode. Yeah, the debut episode. Uh, back then, you were employed. Now you are not. Mm -hmm. So, your title is hobo mm -hmm. for today. Um, I was employed. I'm usually <laughs> exclusive. So, at the time of filming, uh -huh. employed, you, you're a hobo off the street. So, your first person shooter shooter background. Uh, what do you think it is? Because we may have, we had some disagreements last time. You thought I was like the fighting expert, which is why you had me on. Yeah. So like. Fans of the show, uh -huh. our, our millions of fans of the show uh -huh. will remember like, I was confused because on camera, I'm like, wait, why are you here? Because <laughs> I didn't realize you didn't like fighting games. Uh -huh. And so we were- well, That's fighting. why I was there really. Yeah. So here it's like I did light shooters and this is pretty perfect because this is when I enjoyed them most in the heyday of like the early 90s. I was a big like Mac gamer and played a bunch of like Marathon and Unreal and, and Doom and you know, Quake, eh, not as much, but um, then I sort of fell off the wagon, I think, after Halo 3-ish pretty pretty severely, just because I am not I don't play a lot of online multiplayer stuff. Um, but this is like a vocabulary of shooters in a space that I that I know, and I was interested in trying the game. So similarly to you guys, like uh, Quake Doom back in the day, I used to play a ton of Quake. Um, I played some Unreal Tournament back in the day. I love most of the Halo series. Uh, I haven't played much Halo recently, but uh, yeah, still today, nowadays, like Destiny and uh, Star Wars Battlefront games like that, mm -hmm. Overwatch, of course. So. Um, but yeah, let's get started about the game. So we already talked about what this game is and how it plays, uh, but let's hear your thoughts. So Joe, what did you like about this game? So I think one of the things that I, I really liked about this game is the variety of weapons. The game doesn't hide its shooter background kind of, you know, it's, it's out in the open. And I think most of the guns that, you know, you remember from those shooters are kind of represented here. You know, you have like your sword and melee weapons, you have your flamethrowers, you have your sniper rifles. Um, and I think the way that mechanically they work out really does a good, great job of representing, you know, what that weapon is. Like for example, the railgun, um, if you remember that from the old shooter days, the railgun was sort of like the long distance headshot across the map. Go um, through walls too. Go th yeah, straight, straight line weapon. And this game, uh, you know, is represented by a straight line weapon that goes through walls and hits multiple people. 
to me, I think one of the, the greatest smallest little details was in the rocket launcher. So, you know, Quake really um, made the rocket jump kind of like the staple for a rocket launcher. And that is actually represented in the rocket launcher card where one of the abilities you can do off the rocket launcher is move a space. So I think that little attention to detail um, really ties in kind of the shooter element of it. And, and as you know, someone who played a lot of those games in the day, like I really, like I really like that. So it's really kind of a, almost like an Easter egg. Um, but also gameplay wise, it affects the board state, it affects where you move. So yeah, so the weapons themselves I think are great. Um, I think the other thing, other thing I like about this game is that it's, it's pretty minimalistic. Once you kind of get a, a, a basis for uh, you know, the weapons and the terminology and the icons. It's almost easy to look at any card to know what, what the weapon does. Um, you know, that you're not bogged down reading a lot of text. Um, it's easy to kind of look at a weapon and be like, okay, I know what the strategy around this weapon is. Just pick it up and go. Um, so I think that aspect of it really kind of helps move the game along. Cool. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think it, you could tell the designers played the video games, right? Like the rocket jump and things like that, or how the shotgun works or grenade launchers and things like that. But yeah, so how about you, Nick? Yeah, um, yeah, I like, the, I like the, the details of the weapons as well and uh, how they have sort of alternate fire modes too. And that sort of uh, drives how you allocate resources in the game. If you want to like, you want to be able to reload, but you also want to be able to use the alternate fire sometimes depending situationally what's happening on the board. Uh, I like it has a few modes. Um, we, you know, we tried the main mode, we tried the domination mode, which is sort of like area control. Uh, there's a turret mode too. Um, we introduced uh, a bot, and we played the bot this last time too, instead of having a fourth player, which I wasn't crazy about, but I like, I like conceptually that you can add bots. Like, it's got all these sort of thematic touches, I think, that, that uh, you know, do make it feel sort of for better or worse, like, all right, they sort of got the, the setting down, in a sense. Yeah. And I, I, so, for me, besides, I think, well, you guys nailed it, but for me, it's also, like, this is a tactical combat game, and we've seen a lot of this in board games, right? But... Where you don't have to worry about, like, line of sight is super simplified, movement super simplified. And, and you can see this board, like, our three player game today, we only have like uh, 10 squares total to worry about, right? So they did a really good job of stripping out a lot of stuff that normally, like, can you see the guy exactly? How many do you have line of sight? Do you have perfect uh, uh, a place to aim and hit the guy? All you that stuff. Tape measure or something. Yeah, no tape measures, like, all of that stuff removed. They boil it down to a really simple, fast-paced action game because the game's called Adrenaline, right? So as you get damaged, like, it's really easy to figure this out. It's like, there's not, like, all right, my limbs are taking damage, mm -hmm. so it does this. It's not complicated at all. It's like, if I deal you damage, I'm going to give you my tokens, and then you're going to get stronger as you go until you die, and then I score those points back. It's, like, super simplified. Yeah. And I think it fits the theme of, like, the, the name of the game, right? It's just, like, fast-paced, go all out, like, balls out, doesn't slow down at all. All right, now, what did you guys not like about the game? And Nick, I just get the sense you're dying. No, not dying. There's you lots are, of... I know, I know you are. There's, <laughs> there's nothing that, like, drives me nuts especially, but I think most things about it don't, like, quite work for me. I do, like I said, I appreciate it thematically, conceptually. Um, there's a lot of cool touches with the weapons and things. The big thing, which you know I'm going to talk about, is that, and, and I guess I disagree with Joe in that sense, there's, there's way too many weapons, and they're not really, like, weighted in an interesting way, I think. I think most... Like, they, every first-person shooter ever, almost, is, like, driven by, uh, or, I don't know, maybe until I stop playing, are driven by, like, going after certain areas of the map because certain guns spawn there, uh, or there's certain reasons you want to be there. Um, whereas this, I think, is much more mindless. The, the, the board is pretty even. The weapons are randomly distributed around the board, and there's at least, like, nine of them out. Nine completely different weapons at any given time. Some are better than others a little bit, but it's not like we're all chasing after the rocket launcher, like in Halo or something. And the ammo crates respawn all over the board every turn, which like almost seems wrong to me. We have a that's one, by the way. <laughs> um, and uh, there's there's no sort of scarcity in the game. There's no so there's no real like stakes in a sense. It's not like I'm chasing after the last piece of ammo so I can reload and like blast you because I got to it one space first. There isn't the tension that I associate with those like great moments and stories from. Uh, not only classic shooters, but just every really multiplayer shooter I've played. We're just all sort of casually getting weapons, reloading, and firing on each other. So it's more about sort of precise, like, spatial order of operations. Like, I'm going to move here, and then shoot, shoo. Um, I don't agree, because I feel like my selection of weapons were based on, like, what the room situation looked like, or how people are clumped together or lined up, uh, and, and things like that. So I felt like there was definitely strategy there. And in terms of, like, you did mention the timing of, like, when do I pick up the ammo to reload to fire this at the exact right time? 
And to me, a lot of the strategy is, came in when you damage people at the right time because the scoring matters big time, like getting first blood, for example, mm -hmm. or looking at the board like, okay, I would choose, maybe you're the easier target, but I'm gonna shoot Joe because that's gonna score me more points because of how many tokens I had on the board or whatever, so. So when you say weapon selection, though, is that choosing between the weapons you have or like ones you wanna go after? Because I feel like but, once you have two weapons, you're probably gonna spend the rest of the game just reloading them and dealing with it. You're not gonna sort of constantly change out weapons because it's not worth the, it's not worth the action. I do agree with that a little bit, but I do, I, there will be situations I think you will swap out weapons uh, and you can do that. You can carry up the three and then swap them out. But I felt like I, I would put the ones I picked even initially would matter a little bit. I don't try to like, I need one that's like close quarters and I need one that's going to be room control and things like that. So I don't know what do you. So I think one of my issues with the game is that for something that's supposed to be kind of running gun, um, it feels very slow and walk. Um, you just don't get the feeling of, yeah. like, I just want to go in there and I just want to like shoot a bunch of people, right? Um, and to go back to your point about the damage and doing damage to the right point, I think that gameplay-wise, I, I kind of understand why they do that. So, um, you know, other people can kind of get in on point and you can't just shoot a person and get a lot, a lot of points out of it. it. It feels off that I could be shooting someone with a lower damage weapon for most of their life and someone can come in with like a three or four point damage, which is big for this game, and kill them off get most of the points for that kill, get a skull off of it. I feel that like... That said, that's pretty realistic for shooters where it's like, you've been, you've been like... Because, I mean, I'll do that in shooters where you're like, watch two other people fight and right before one of them dies, you like come in there and get the kill and then they have to deal with an assist or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I get that's true. I, I'm not saying it works as... It necessarily but, works here, but at least it is true to this. And that's so, something I think some of that stuff feels maybe like... I don't know, maybe it's slavish at the expense of the game being fun. Uh, things change and people get out ahead a little bit and whatever, but like largely the board is the same. You're not like blowing up in new entrances or the level's not changing. There's not level... I mean, we played with the domination mode, which at least you're sort of having to shoot control points. But largely you're doing the same thing from the beginning to the end, and there isn't... The game's not long enough for it to change much. And even if one person gets out ahead, you're too busy dealing with like reloading and not dying sort of that you're not really sort of it's not like everyone's turning on them but just stop them from winning really it's like there's i just don't think there's much variance uh, throughout yeah. but you've played the game more than i've shoot like what do you what do you think about that yeah you feel I, like I, you've had very different experiences um i generally agree i think because in like the points about you like you don't switch out your weapons a whole lot right mm -hmm. you might get kind of comfortable you, you have like two mainstays um in the arena variety, I definitely agree. Like that's one thing is, so we were talking about this before the show where there's uh, two double-sided boards and there's three possible board layouts, right, for number of players. And like I, small, medium, and large. Basically, But yeah. they're not a different tone, really. They're just like more rooms. Yeah, I feel like, like the, how awesome would it be if we could make our own arena and have weird hallways or tunnels and things you like that? You do it. Just yeah. get a scissors. Just, just uh, <laughs> start clipping these. Right? But like, think about like, uh, you think about like Temple and GoldenEye, right? Classic, like great level design example. There's that one, there's like the sniper rifle, I think, at the end of the tunnel and you just sit there and camp and like people have to go for you eventually because there's yeah. also outside influencing forces. So like having some asymmetrical level design, putting right. a high-powered weapon, weapon in a corner or something, like give us reasons to fight over something. To me, it's like if the board is going to be this tight quarters, then it's like, give us reasons to fight over things. Like, make the ammo scarce, or make a super powerful gun pop up sometimes. Or, like, make the board bigger so we can actually sort of, like, stalk each other. But I guess that's not very adrenaline-like. I just don't know if it works as is. Or make it more chaotic, you know? In these, in these small environments, you know, you think about a shooter, like, th those are, like, the most chaotic ones, right? Like, those are, like, the put rocket launchers everywhere and just have people just be shooting left yeah, and right yeah. and just let the chaos kind of... Like rocket launcher mode in Halo. Yeah. Or, or like Duke Nukem had those tiny levels and just like just you're yeah. dying. Yeah, I mean... And, and constantly seconds. be dying and respawning. Yeah. yeah. That's sort of what I want out of this is like I want to, you know, I want to like whatever, telefrag people and then have them respawn and shoot me from the cross of the map and then I die and like just as quicker back and forth. You only really die like you know, twice probably in the whole game, each mm -hmm. of us maybe. Yeah. I like the point system in this thing because I think that makes it a board game. Right, mm -hmm. like I think it's like if it's too action oriented, it's it, I don't know, it'd be a weird trying to be a board game, but it's like it's, it'd be really shallow. I felt like that's where the board game strategy came in was like trying to maximize your points and forgetting for a second that it's just a pure balls out shooter. But yeah, I mean, I, I basically agree with you guys. I think my only other comment is it's weirdly I wish they had more weapons because it's a board game. I felt like we've we've all pretty much seen every weapon in one session you're gonna mm -hmm. see most of the weapons in the game so the next session you play is like okay i already know there's a rocket launcher that does this and there's a hammer that does this but um but yeah and i'm surprised you didn't say this like there's no way you like the aesthetic of this game 
No, well, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't, but... Uh... <laughs> I do. I, I know you well enough to know, like... See, I like this dude. I like this yellow, happy face robot guy. Of course you would. Uh, what? Uh, well, he, you know. Uh, well, that's probably the only unit I like out of the, out yeah, of the five That's why I keep well. picking them. Yeah. But I, I like the, the gun art sort of generic to me. Just, and yeah, and the, and the graphic design and everything. It's fine. It feels like they, like they didn't commit to one direction with the art. Like, it's supposed to be serious. It's supposed to be a little bit more cartoony. Um, it's supposed to be gritty. It's supposed to be humorous. Like, I don't feel like it... it the aesthetics really captured exactly what it's supposed to be. All right, let's get to our conclusions. So we're each going to roll a d20, so grab one of these, and then that's how many words you're going to get to make your final statement about the game, and then we're going to come back and give our final scores. Three. Three. 20. 19. Uh, wow. You, guys you want ready? some words, shoe? I got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, you rolled a 20, you have 20 I words. Did. I got the critical hit of uh, final thoughts here. All right, go for it. You wrote each word in a separate line, too. I'm impressed. I did. Uh, I got to get all my thoughts in order. All right, all 20. Uh, adrenaline tries to recreate run and gun, but feels more like walk and think. Less time lagging, more time fragging. Wow, that was good. You did that. And you finished like minutes yeah. before yeah. me. Yeah. Very I, cool. I got another. You had 19 words. Yeah. Going. As it feels 90s enough, but doesn't take the right lessons from shooter design history, doesn't make me miss shooters, sadly. All right. I rolled a three, which I think is the lowest roll. I am shoe. <laughs> <laughs> shoe, me, shoe. Uh, great. Comma, that doesn't count as one more. Great hmm. needs more. You think it's great? I like this game a lot. Yeah, I'm actually surprised you guys did not like it as much as I did. But hmm. let's vote. So a great game. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, it needs more. Uh, so the Even okay. Less. I know I keep changing this. Every time someone watches this show, something's changed. Three people, right? Uh, the voting system, I want to do this. Love it. <laughs> like it. You're meh on it. You don't like it. All right? So on account of three, just stick out your fingers and then tell us what you're voting. Okay, on three. One, two, three. All right. I'm going to do a double meh. Oh. Two mehs and a like. All uh -huh. right, great. Well, thank you guys for your time, and now let's move on to some Sean Beatty. Yay! Welcome back to another Bad Game Bonanza analog with me, Sean Beatty. Uh, this one is all about the Dr. Laura game, which is a very important game. I'm sure everyone out there has played. It's in every household. Uh, it was a late 90s game based on the, um, the radio personality of the same name, and uh, if you're not familiar with Dr. Laura, uh, people would call into Dr. Laura and she would give terrible advice to people. They, they'd say, hey, Dr. Laura, my mom's an alcoholic. What do I do? And Dr. Laura would say, murder your mother because alcoholics are the devil. Like she's not a good person, but she was on the radio for a long time and they made this board game better. Now, what's crazy about this board game is there's not really like a game so much. It's more of like a like a party activity for people who really enthusiastically love Dr. Laura, which is a tough group to get together. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna assume we all love Dr. Laura and we're all very familiar with Dr. Laura, which is, um, if you're a kid today, you probably only know her as the woman who used the N-word with a hard R 10 years ago and then got kicked off the radio. And that's why you probably don't know who Dr. Laura is. So you have a die and on it is nag, preach, and teach. Isn't that cute? So if you roll teach, that's the easy one. What happens is you get a card and then you hear three answers and then all of the other players vote on which one they think Dr. Laura said, right? I mean, that's fun, right? To... So for example, hi, Dr. Laura, this is from Pam. My husband and I have a six month old baby. Our Cocker Spaniel has shown some aggression lately and I've heard about rage syndrome in this breed. I want to get rid of the dog for the baby's sake, but my husband doesn't. What should we do? Is it A, I'm a dog lover and I don't know from rage syndrome and cockers. A Rottweiler I could see. That'll eat a fucking baby. That was me. That was me saying that, not Dr. Laura. If you're worried, send it to obedience school. Seems reasonable. That could have been her. B, this is a no-brainer. If your husband wants the dog, it's his job to make sure it's never alone with a baby. Even a man can handle that. This one's iffy because Dr. Laura might be a terrible racist and an idiot, but I don't think she's a sexist. C. 
get rid of the dog. Tell your husband, you get pregnant for nine months, give birth, and then watch something eat it. Till then, it's my decision. So, <laughs> they're all pretty crazy, but I think A might be the least crazy. Let's see which one it might be. It's C, it's C, that was the most crazy one. The one where she's like, bitch, you pass a baby through your birth canal and feed it to a dog and then talk to me. That's the one she said. With Nag, you announce which player's response you think is closest to Dr. Laura's answer after everyone around the table gives an answer. So I present you, the players, with a problem. This one is, my grandmother, from Julie, whom I loved very much, died last week. Sad one. My father, her only son, is an alcoholic, and he came to the funeral reeking of alcohol. I'm so angry. Should I confront him? So then everyone around the table uh, takes this very difficult situation and answers it to the best of their ability. And then you vote very subjectively on who was the closest to what Dr. Laura said, which was, like, oh, I'll give you a minute at home to answer this question. Grandmother's dead. Her only son shows up to the funeral drunk. What do you do? Okay. Were you close to? You're still in mourning and taking some of that pain and anger out against your dad. What's the point of yelling at a drunk about being a drunk? Did you get that? Maybe. Who could know? It's not an objective thing. So maybe you move ahead. We don't know. Probably not. So you're still stuck at one. Even assuming you got that crazy dog one right. We're gonna be playing this game for 15 fucking hours. Preach is the third option. Now preach is out of control wild. So this one is very similar to the last one, but in this case, you're trying to be better than Dr. Laura in a room of Dr. Laura enthusiasts. So it's pretty hard. It's a really high bar. So for example, you might say, hello, Dr. Blank, because you as the player will be playing Dr. Laura in this case. I've been dating a woman for three years who has begun showing interest in other women. She wants us to bring a woman into our bedroom. Part of me really wants to try it, but another part says it's immoral? What should I do? Now remember, you're pretending to be Dr. Laura. You're not your own doctor with your own show. So you're trying to give Dr. Laura advice, but better. So, your lady's a lesbian. She wants to bring another lady into the room. What do you think of that? Now, me personally, sounds awesome, but also a terrible idea. I know enough about women to know this is not gonna end well for anybody. It's gonna be a lot of hurt feelings. Someone's gonna feel left out of that married lesbian threesome. It's just the way things work, trust me. So let's see how I hold up to Dr. Laura's response. There's an important distinction between being a male and being a man. A male will jump at the chance to nail anything. <laughs> it's really true. It's, <laughs> I fucked a bowling ball this morning. So will the dog next door. Yeah, he, <laughs> that dog next door fucked the same bowling ball. But a man operates within a value system. If you're not into sex as recreation, you've got the wrong woman for your future. I think my answer was 0.2 times better. So in this case, I would move ahead 1.2 spaces. Maybe it's not quite clear whether you're supposed to be as good or better than Dr. Laura in the rules. So if you're playing along at home, we'll just give everybody nine spaces and we all win. So that was the Dr. Laura game for three to six adult players, all of which enjoy the Dr. Laura program from 20 years ago before she was disgraced as a racist. Thank you.